everybody to the, this word plonde. Uh, today I want to talk about the lessons I learned from the plon community. Uh, if you're looking at my slides, I have a lot of background images. Uh, they're used on a fair use condition, so uh, take that like it. Who I am today? I'm Alexander Löchel. I'm a Dippel inform. I'm a Dippel Informatica Universitaire, which is compared to a master in computer scientists. I'm an IT manager at a larger university in Germany. And within the PLON community, I'm a member of the PLON uh, Foundation. I'm a member of the PLON security team. I'm a former member of the PLON Foundation Boards of Directors. I'm a former PLON edu liaison. And I'm the maintainer of Restricted Python, or one of the maintainers now. But overall, more an, as an, numerous, an emeritus than an active member. Uh, so I, in some way, I can look back on the time I had as an active member of Plone, what I learned from the community, and what uh, benefits or changes of behavior it gave to me. One of the uh, important things I see when I'm looking back is the statement from Lawrence Rowe. You can take the man out of Plone but you could not take the plan out of the man. And that is so true. If you worked with plan, worked with the plan community, you learned so many things. You get so many uh, skills, uh, behavior changes, uh, seen uh, role models, seen a good way of adapting things that you change your behavior and adopt the good knowledge and learn from mistakes you have done before and everything. And it's all about uh, that, what I want to talk. Uh, if I'm looking off my timeline in the Plone community, I actually started 2003 with Plone on evaluating different content management systems. And we finally selected Plone due to its fabulous accessibility uh, capabilities at that time. Then I worked uh, a bit with Plone overall, how to manage it, how to create content types, how to create a, a theme and everything within. But I was like a standalone worker. Uh, I feel like I don't know enough. I could not participate in the community. I could not drive to any events or something because I know too little of everything. 2008, uh, I moved back to Munich. Uh, and there was a fantastic small clone user group there, a local one, that I joined, learned a lot. Uh, there were fantastic. Uh, persons within the Plon community. And the two I directly want to mention is Max Jakob and Philip Bauer that were a part of the or core of this um, local user group. And with them, I joined then 2010, the first time a Plon conference. And since 2010, I participated in all global Plon conferences at all. 2013, or actually 2012, the Plone Board of Directors asked me if I want to become a um, Plone Ambassador, and the next year they asked me to join the board. I joined, and for six years I was a board member, I think two or three years uh, Vice President of the Plone Foundation took over some more responsibilities, worked a lot with uh, the people in the community, work a lot of uh, Plone on Python 3. And 2019, after a very hard year, 2018 for me, I stepped down as a board member and focused on other topics. So if I'm thinking about Plone, your personality develops over time. and as I started 2003 with Plone, I was a young student. 
uh, not uh, really uh, business um, experience. I had probably already 10 years of programming skills and uh, so, but I was still on the learning period, learning how, what programming means, what web programming especially means, what's the difference, uh, and coming more from a back end point of view where you think it's m the technology part is important, the business logic, how something works, not how you present it, how you go with it. But if you're looking in the behavior of the role models from the community, you see actually the technology in the background is not that important. It's the presentation you do and the empowerment of the users you go. So you learn a lot from mistakes you do over the time. You adapt good behaviors from role models. You adapt uh, knowledge you learn even from the mistakes of others and that's so fantastic in the community that we are both willing to share our knowledge to give away to onboard new people all the time work together with them without uh, doing it that we see them as well competitors or something, we are like a family in the plant community and that's fantastic. So for me, it was that I learned a lot of new skills, soft skills, social skills and hard skills. And being a computer scientist, you sometimes had these weird um, stereotypes of computer scientists that they are not talking to others, that they are very focused on some technology parts. I guess in the beginning I was like that, more focused on the tiny bits, the special uh, parts in some software things. And I learned a lot to open up, uh, see the other points of view, uh, see the benefits of diverse teams and everything it was really a lot of learning for me. And the Plown community, is a group of outstanding people, great knowledge, experience, a spirit of innovations. And after all, it's a good vibrations. The community has such a positive energy. You really feel welcomed. Uh, during my um, master th uh, thesis time, I wrote uh, some software in the Linux kernel and I uh, experienced there my first open source uh, communications with teams and everybody who might have heard it, the com communication within the Linux kernel, mailing lists and everything is not that welcoming or positive and you quickly feel not welcome, uh, you're feeling stupid, and you say, oh, I'm not ready for doing that. The plant community is totally different. Uh, it doesn't matter what skill set you have, they help you to bring you in. If you're uh, coming from outside, from uh, being not a software developer, uh, bring you in to help clarify documentation, write bug reports, uh, give uh, feature requests, all the things that help the community out to understand new things. And they uh, really welcome you to give that. And that was such a different experience for me that I say, yeah, I wanna see more of that community and join with them. And I've seen that pl the plant community is all about values. And the values are the important things. And values comes mostly from the leaders. You have great ideas, you have a great uh, community and you have great leaders, especially. And especially Alexander Limi and Alan Runyon in the beginning was fantastic leaders. And one of the things they really brought to the plant communities that 
everybody is equal. There are no rock stars within the communities. Everybody is welcomed. Everybody is uh, cherished. Um, I can still remember uh, 2010, I joined for my first time the International Plum Conference. What was Alexander Limi doing? Inviting all the newbies to the conference to beer or some other drinks uh, at the evening, talking, uh, asking why we're coming to Plone, what we're liking, what we don't like. And it was really welcoming. I can remember uh, 2013, uh, it was the Plone conference in uh, Brasilia. Um, I wasn't asked uh, by that point by the board to join but Max and me had a trip through uh, Brasilia looking uh, into the city. And at the end, we stopped by uh, a gas station near to our hotel to pick some drinks, who we met, Alan Runyon. And Alan took, I think, almost two hours sit down <laughs> with us at this gas station, drinking some beer, talking about the stuff. and. Uh, really, it was like you're a member of the community. It doesn't matter uh, how long you are there. It just matter that you are there and uh, work together with everyone. And that was so fantastic. And that was also one of the reasons 2013, as they asked me to join the board, that I say, yeah, uh, that's such a fabulous community. I want to um, help and um, steward such a community to help them survive and live on. Because already 2013, we've seen Alex Lim and Alan Runyon on the way out and uh, leaving and the other or new members of the community taking over. One thing I also see a lot is uh, humans are allergic to change. A lot other uh, technology communities don't like change. Uh, I'm working in a university. Even if we are developing new uh, or research on new uh, science, on new behaviors, on new technologies, actually the p people working there are very conservative in some ways. They don't like change. Uh, change is very, very, very slow. And if we're looking in the plant community, there's a different type of feeling. They quickly adopt new things and that's fantastic. And one of the uh, most important thing is about rapid turnaround to, to give the developer and the users quickly a good feedback what they're doing and um, well how to say it a good experience what they're doing so that you not have to wait five minutes till the software compiles and you can do something uh, there is a video by Jean Kelly uh, from 2006 uh, about rep turnaround or better web development. And a lot of uh, the things he said really uh, came to my mind in the time I worked more with Plone and involved for my time uh, being a manager, that it's all about how to give the developers in some way fun working with your software were, uh, and on the other hand, make it easy to understand, to learn and adapt. And if you really feeling a joy programming and not feeling that the software working against you helps a lot of um, producing new good uh, features and software, that's a fabulous thing. So one of the thing is if you're looking in the hype cycles or in the um, adoption rate uh, course, that normally uh, even the good software developers are maybe in early 
a majority or uh, early adopters if they're good. I've seen with the plone community that most of us uh, go more into the innovators uh, type. So we quickly adopt new tools if we hear them, try them out, see if they may help us uh, be innovative. And if you're looking into Plone and Zope, Zope was in some ways 10, 20 years ahead of the competitors. Uh, in the software. They were even so much ahead that most of the users don't really understand what Zob is or Zob can do for them. So um, that's the one thing. And Plone sat on top and utilize the benefits of Zob and gives a design that on top of it that it makes usable for the users give it ready, but we have seen a lot of things where we, we was really ahead. I still can remember the um, in-place editing on the website in Plone 3, which was or is today uh, becoming the norm in most other uh, content management systems. We dropped it in Plone 4 because most of the users were confused or not aware that something like that was happening and got into a lot of uh, lockings of their site because they are, wasn't aware that they have to abort their changes or something like that. If they clicked into a field and uh, were able to change something. So there is a lot of things in there. So with, it comes with all the hype cycle and things about digging that we are technology triggerer in a way. And we don't fear uh, touching technology early and be aware that we go through a sliding uh, down or truth of this illusion and with the technology maybe afterwards. Uh, because we try to figure out if a new technology benefits us. If it uh, benefits us, we keep it. If not, we uh, took another tool and try that. So there's a lot of flexibility and mind thinking that technologies can help you to improve, but it's not to stick with the technologies you have as the necessity. It's the thing that you're always able uh, to change and everything. And you should never be too busy to improve in that way. And that's so fantastic with the Plone community. We have ever uh, take the capabilities we have. And even if we need to learn three new things to get something working in a new way, uh, we do it. So adapting change is something really critical. And that's fantastic for me as a manager today to see how to mentor uh, my colleagues, my fellows in the job uh, to think about adoption rate or think about changes and even uh, about fault tolerance because if you fail, it's not a problem. Uh, you can do a lot. And what we see is change is the essential process of all existence. Uh, in IT, everything changes. If a software uh, keeps the same for a few years, it's ages. It's, um, it's not used anymore. Uh, newer software has a better look and feel, better handling, a better usability and everything. So we need to change. If in software something don't change, it's a that piece of software and we should be aware of it. And also there comes another mindset in my uh, point of view, because if we thinking like uh, in other technology um, um, branches where you build a bridge a building that lasts 100 years, 200 years, or even longer. If you build art or um, create art, paintings that maybe 
will be uh, visible in museums in 500 years or something. In the IT technologies, it's something different. If your technology is still there in 10 years that you introduced, that's amazing. But you should not uh, believe that you're producing something uh, for eternity. Uh, in technology or in the uh, IT technology, it changes so quick and so lo so often that your uh, software is for the moment, not for the long time. Uh, what I've seen. I learned a lot of different tools and uh, technologies that are actually not key part of clone itself. Well, I started as a maybe a stupid, naive uh, student. And uh, today, some of my colleagues may see me even as some kind of 10 time programmer, but it's not that I'm really that good. It's just that I adopted uh, by the skills I've seen in the clone community. Uh, a lot of technologies see, okay, that technology might bring something new. That technology is very interesting. There uh, you can get some benefits. Oh, if you're looking into that, that's maybe not right, but well, if it's not work, take another tool. And if we're looking into the web technologies, clone teaches you about the whole web. You, if you really worked with Plone, you have understood afterwards the full stack uh, of HTTP protocol, uh, caching technologies, how the web really works, how technology um, communicates with each other, how one layer builds on top of another layer on top of another layer. So there are so many things I have learned that are not directly bind to clone itself, but you learn on the way producing a good website with clone. And that's uh, things on the hard skill level I've learned today that helped me a lot. And the other thing is you learn uh, some kind of fault tolerance. If you are wrong, you can try again all the time. If you're working that quickly with uh, version control, you always have the chance to make a quick rollback, start again. Or if you choose uh, a new tool to try something out, if it does not work, well, you can take another tool and try it again. There's so many possibilities. So uh, don't be afraid to take actions. Just take the action. If you're wrong, it doesn't matter. No one uh, cares. Uh, and even if you're talking about what mistakes you have done or what you have learned by doing it wrong, the whole community can benefit. And it's a fantastic uh, feedback mechanism you get with it uh, at the sprints, at the conferences. Go there, talk there. It's really fantastic. Back to the values for me. So... If I'm talking, I've talked before about skills I've learned, or um, it was more like hard skills, so technology knowledge I've seen or something. But I've seen more communication is the key. If I was more into the technology before, I've seen, yeah, even the best technology does not count or is nothing worth if you could not communicate it, if you could not sell it, if you could not present it to other people. Communication is the key. If you're trying to develop a new feature and discuss it at a sprint, the communication on presenting it, getting the feedback together is so essential that I can really uh, say every computer scientist, every programmer should get into communications lessons or something so that they really see or benefit what communications can help them. It's uh, one of the key elements for success. The other thing is Plone is 
for me, 100% about empowering users. We as the developers, we as the administrators of the systems are not the core focus people. We are the people that develop it, yes, but the users that actually use the systems are the people we are looking for because they maybe use it not the whole time. They might use uh, the content management system twice, uh, four, three times, four times, five times a year for 10 minutes to change a few sentences on their personal page or something. And it, it's important that they can work with it very quickly. If we see into power users, how to get things together to style their site, to give a layout, to um, include uh, content from other parts of the site, to include um, new features and everything. It's all about empowering the users and one thing that belongs for me uh, for empowering the users is accessibility. Accessibility is building bridges between all the people because as we're thinking that we are capable of communicating our interests, our ideas, not all people are capable of taking uh, or uh, communicate with a computer like us. And accessibility has a lot of different varieties. Uh, disabilities came in so many forms. Situational uh, requirements, temporary impairment or permanent disabilities all come together and we have to think about it. And uh, Plon really does a fantastic job with it. And if we think about those, then we get more people into it. We get more diverse um, ideas, more diverse communication and feedback to our systems, to our products. And that helps us, uh, for me as a person in a university, helps us to create new research, new, new knowledge, because if you have a different point of view, you ask new questions. And that's the key of science in some way. Uh, the other thing is we don't try to uh, make a new system more and more complex. The, it was really Alexander Lini and now um, Victor de Fernandez de Alba and uh, the others that works a lot with design. It's all about reducing complexity to make it simpler. Uh, Apple is probably the one known to, with simplified designs, get the user to the key that they actually need and everything. And Clone goes directly the same way. Simplify everything so that it's easy for the users uh, to work with it. And I've seen it so many times, any intelligent fool can make things bigger and complex. It takes that touch of genius, a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. This quote from Albert Einstein is really so much. If you can simplify something, do it. It's so much worth an adoption later on. And what I've also seen is the best, best way to predict the future is to create it. So take your capabilities, join in community, join in your work you're doing and make the change because change does not happen by its own. So Things are made to happen, and we need to do that, thanks. And it comes together. I've seen it with uh, Plone on Python 3. We are now with Python 5.2 uh, running on um, um, Python 3, but it was such a long journey, and there were so many blockers in that line we talked about. 
at the beginning, as I started with uh, restricted Python, everybody said, Plone will never run on Python 3 because there are so many blockers in ZOAP in uh, the underlying Python and restricted Python was one of the key elements. It was so complex, so undocumented and not really uh, based on unit tests, on integration tests that you can, really could see what it really does. So it was really hard in the beginning, but everything is possible to change and uh, you just have to dig into it, read it, uh, communicate with others, look uh, what you're using, adopt new tools to help it. And there was so many things. And I personally learned a lot of this uh, transition too. And on the other hand, if you're seeing people like Philip Bauer doing such a good job bringing the community, get all uh, the other uh, layers in the plone region together to run then on uh, a ZOAP that runs on Python 3. And now we are there and we are looking now into the uh, plone 6 with Walto, a new way where we have a decoupled front end in JavaScript React. There's a lot of technologies in the flow, but it's always coming back to the point of rapid turnaround. Make the developer happy, let them develop quickly new features, new features, good features that the user want to adopt and would like to work with, and both sides are happy. And even if we are thinking about the job is something you get paid for, you do even if you don't like it because you get paid for it. No, software, good software is giving you a motivation doing it, doing it right and makes, let you have fun working with it. And that's also a really key element we should uh, focus on. And the another thing for me is I had the chance to travel the world because I was an open source developer. And I had so many great experience at the conferences in San Francisco, Arnheim, Brasilia, uh, Bristol, The Plock, uh, Tokyo, Boston, Bucharest, uh, Barcelona. There's so many things and it was always such nice because it's plum. It's an awesome community. You meet one times a year somewhere at the world and it's always like, yeah, good to see you. Give me a hug. You're welcome again. It's you, it's a, it's like large uh, family meeting that makes so much fun. And even if you don't work with Plone anymore, you feel, yeah, let's go to that family meeting. It, it's just about fun, a community working together, seeing what they do on their side projects, on other technologies, learn uh, what others do at the moment. There's so many interesting and fun things and really that gives good benefit. And on the other hand, I can say it's like also an addiction you get to that community because it's really enjoyed, fun, it's friends. It's like uh, from the song from Hotel California, you can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. And uh, Lawrence Rose had it right. You can take the man out of plone, but you, can you can't take the plone out of the man. Thank you. <laughs>